And here we are in front of the House of Silken Shadows. I thought about changing my team before talking to Nocticola. But do I really need to? I don't think so. Team's fine. We still have all the buffs on, so I think I think we're fine. Um, so yeah, we are. I think I've done every single quest here except for the main one, which is attend the audience in Nocticula's palace and arrange a meeting with Nocticula for Ember. So that's what we're gonna do now. We have Ember in the team, so. Yeah, let's just, let's go inside and see what this is all about. Will there be a fight here? Possibly. The tall shelves are stuffed with countless books and scrolls praising the, the Lady in Shadow's man, many deeds. Some tomes are old and threadbare, others are new and in mint condition. Knowledge check 35, world, success. The, the ink on the page is still wet. The book tells of the murderous massacre committed by the Lady in Shadow among the Coloxus de demons of the Midnight Isles. It seems it happened quite recently. Another knowledge check here. The Lady in Shadow's library is called the Vault of Graves. It contains, it contains the biography of everyone whose life Nocticula has ever taken. And her victims are innumerable. Mm. Wow. Should we save it here? I'll save it. Save it there. Uh, some loot here. My blade serves our lady in shadow. Ah. Nothing too good so far. Let's go to the main hall. Check this side now. This looks like a lab or something. Wow, okay. B books written in multiple languages. The titles are, uh, that can be translated are dedicated to research into the nature of souls. Lexicon of Paradox Part 2. Okay, this is... Should I use it now? The letters written by the hand of Ariel Vorlesh appear to have life all over all, all their own. A moment's, a moment's inattention and they, bege they begin to disperse, changing shape and moving toward the edge of the page as though they are planning to leap off. Focus on the text. Sekar's attention focuses on a couple of words that seem to have only just swapped places. The words freeze as, as though they never m moved at all. But out of the corner of his eye, the commander sees several words on the other side of the page begin a discreet game of leapfrog. I set it aside. It's nothing. That was our only cho choice. Okay. Letters. Uh, 
Come on. Unfinished letter. Another projector. As you know, my dear addressee, given the scope of the planes, time is a rel relative concept and in the abyss it can be even more unreliable. Therefore, I do not allow myself the vain hope that my message will reach you in time. Okay. What's the message? Okay, is that, is that all you've got to say? Oh, your final question was about the possibility of a complete awakening of the memoirs of a mortal life within a soul that has already passed through Parasma's judgment. I will send you the research on the cases of which I am aware where such an awake, awakening took place. Interesting. Your final question was about the possibility of a complete awakening. Oh yeah, okay, that's what we read. I'm not really sure why I'm reading this again. Despite the fact that this list is quite extensive, my conclusion is that all such recorded cases are the rarest exceptions to the rule, and with the absolute majority of souls, an occurrence such as this cannot happen. So it looks like uh, a real of Orlesh is about kind of, I don't know what she's trying to do, resurrect, reinvent life, something like that. Anyway, I'm saving it again here. Both the wonder and the tragedy of mortality lie in in the fact that there is a certain moment after which the process is fin final and irre irreversible. The essence that departs the judgment of the Lady of Grace is no longer what it was in life, and we as scientists must account for this in the system of knowledge we are constructing. Okay. Something here as well. Oh. Collect the lexicon. I think we gave the first part to the Queen, to Queen Golfrey, right? I think. Alright, back to the main hall. Our Lady in Shadow, the Queen of the Midnight Isles, Lady Nocticula, Demon Lord of Darkness and Lust. Okay, these guards look pretty scary. So we have to be careful. Is that Nocticula? That's a real that's a real. Greetings. Uh greetings. What's up? I haven't seen you for a while. Greetings, Commander. Oh, I have seen you recently. Lady Arilu, allow me to express my deepest admiration of your work, and may I just ask... Right, what are you doing here, Arilu? And with the, su uh, with the suture? The suture is my servant. I did not expect him to rush into the abyss after me, but I have allowed him to remain with me while I take care of some business. However, you asked what I am doing here. I bring answers. You have walked a long path, one where shadows constantly flicker at the edge of your vision, and questions multiply like flies above carrion. It is time for answers. At least, some of them. Arilo lifts her mirror, and you fall into its cold, shimmering depths. Oh yeah, that's the beginning of the game. That's Day 16, us. Aridus 4715. 
Experiment, transformation. Subject, let's skip that. Objective, to embed the essence of an Ahindrian crystal in the soul of the subject. Expected result, the essence will coalesce with the subject's soul, which will ready itself for total transformation, triggering the concomitant powers. The time has come to put my plan into action. Yeah, that is us beneath Canabras. You are my creation. Your power was my gift. Now you know. Really? Well, that's a bit shocking. I thought my power comes from my Yamane. Well, let's say I believe you. Why did you need to do all this? You are asking the right questions, but the time has not yet come. Ah, such special memories. Remember the laboratory, do you? I told you back then. Go on, look around. See all the ones Lady Aurelia worked on. Here with us is definitely the place for you. Hand of Inheritor. The unseen angel does not, does not speak, but his silence seems to thunder in your ears. Your power is of the same kind as that of Nulkaneth, Jerebeth, and the other demons that you have met. And killed. The power of the Nehindrian crystal dissolved into the blood lies within your soul. I have already hinted at this to you once before, when I left the essence along with the lexicon of paradox in my old laboratory, and ordered the suture to make sure the gift found its way into your hands. But there is more. Do you remember when you were taken to Canabris with a wound that would not heal? Do you remember how Terendalev apparently healed you? That was merely an illusion. The dragon was only able to temporarily dull the pain. In fact, it was I who saved you, when I came to you in the caves and implanted a crystal within you. No, saved is not the right word. Your wound is still not healed. That is why your wound weeps blood from time to time, every drop of which burns your enemies. Well, as far as I remember, Arilu, you so before Terendalev healed me it was you you still it was you who sent me to Canabras in the first place so there was something like that I remember that so if I was wounded it's because of you you risked my life there As, it, uh, as if to confirm her words, blood begins to seep from the wound of your, on your chest. Eerie flames seem to dance within the crimson drops. This is pure essence of Nehindrian crystal. My invention is far superior to the crystals used by Xanther, which were barely refined at all. It will give you new strength, and help you to overcome the wound that still slumbers within your soul. Take it. Take it, and you will see that this is the very power that has lived in you since the Battle of Canabras. Hey, uh, are we doomed to? <laughs> the, the Chief shared his power with us, so does that mean we're cursed as well? How long do we have left? Say it ain't so, I'm too young to die so tragically. That's not going to work. You need to tell me everything first. Very well, then. Ask your questions and I will answer. Right. What is this wound in my soul? How dangerous is it? It was my mistake. My failure. I failed to... The tale is too long to recount here. Your wound is a reflection of the world wound, in a way. It is very dangerous, even if you do not yet realize it. It is not a disease, but rather an abscess, which will one day burst and kill you. It cannot fully be healed until the world wound is healed. No doubt you have felt this affliction on several occasions. 
It awakens when you use your power. It makes you sense more strongly what mortals call the corruption of the Abyss. Until the world wound is healed, you will have no peace. Right. Tell me about the, the Nahendrian crystals. Start from the beginning. Nahendrian crystals are formed from the solidified blood of demon lords. Their properties are not well known, even among the inhabitants of the Abyss. And there are reasons for this. Acquiring the blood of a dead demon lord is very difficult. After a demon lord dies, their body is instantly absorbed into the Rift of Repose. Only the Lady in Shadow knows how to kill them in a way that allows her to preserve the bodies of her fellow lords and transform them into a solid state. That means that Nahindrian crystals cannot be obtained anywhere other than the Midnight Isles. Okay. It, this seems to confirm what we learned in the tower from the storyteller. Or rather, it was impossible until recently. When I managed to experimentally obtain a crystal from the blood of a still living lord. You saw the result. A dagger made from Descari's freshly shed blood, which I left for you in Canabras. As regards the use of the crystals, that is a discussion that would take time. A very long time. Someday I will finish my groundbreaking treatise on the transformation of Nehindrian crystals. Although it is unlikely I will ever publish it. Right, so you figured out how to Im uh, use the crystals to imbue living creatures with power. Not just any creatures. Demons. And half-demons. The soul must have a stable connection with the Abyss in order for it to receive the power of the crystal. Experiments involving tieflings and mongrels failed because the voice of the Abyss was not strong enough within them. But I am not a demon. I wasn't a demon either when I started. But there are always ways to circumvent or even to override the laws of the universe. I changed myself by knitting my soul together with the essence of the Abyss. And I changed you. Do you remember the fits of rage that began shortly after Descari's attack on Canabras? This is how the second half of your soul manifested itself. Not yet fully aware. Not yet awakened. It's a pity you did not choose to let your demonic nature take hold. The result would have been most impressive. All those arrogant crusaders, those knights with their eyes ablaze, those pious priests. They have installed at the head of their magnificent army a scion of the Abyss. The creation of the architect of the world wound, whom they so revile. Alright, my power is different from that of Cheribeth, Norkinteth, Norkineth and the other demons. Yes, because I taught Xanther and the other servants of Baphomet and Discari the earliest version of this transformation ritual. I spent decades perfecting it until I obtained the power that I gave to you. Power in its most purified form. Cleansed of the filth and chaos inherent within the original blood of the demon lords. Your power is as pure as thrice distilled water. But it resonates with other powerful sources of supernatural power, such as the Sword of Valor. And your power can change. You must have realized this already. You have shaped my gift into a form that you yourself have chosen. Right. It's strange to see you here in Nocticula's palace. What do you, who do you really serve? Both. And neither. I have served both Discari and Baphomet, and not merely as the lowest in the pecking order. But I do not think you'll be surprised when I tell you that to me, both of these mighty lords are merely convenient temporary sources of power. And their time is almost at an end. But the Lady in Shadow is different. She is the preeminent ruler. Soon you will understand this for yourself. Okay. You fall, followed me. <laughs> like a witch in a fairy tale, I watched over you from birth. 
from before that even. And I kept detailed notes. You were chosen and prepared for a special destiny. Aside from this, I helped you, even when you were unaware of my presence. I saved you and your unfortunate companions when you fell into the crevice in Canabras. I already said that, Arilu. The only reason why I fell is because of you. That's why I was I ended up there in the first place. In the Grey Garrison, it was I who distracted Monago to allow you to approach the Wardstone. And in Dresden, I appeared under the guise of Yaniel to guide you toward the Sword of Valor. And I also left you a present in my old laboratory, and told the suture to see that you received it. I knew that sooner or later you would find your way there. That place exerts a powerful pull. Okay. As it turns out, you helped me thwart the plans of your masters, Baphomet and Descari. They are not my masters, they are a resource. Why was the whole ploy in with the lab necessary? You were ready to sacrifice your servant, the suture, for it? You always have to sacrifice something. I wanted you to go to the laboratory to see with your own eyes what I had been doing and what I am capable of. So it would be easier for you to accept the truth. The laboratory is the place where... where I prepared your ascent. And the suture was the only one who I could trust to execute my plan and explain everything. After all, he too once experienced rebirth at my hands. And that is why I was willing to risk his life. Okay, I passed the perception check there. Look at that. I actually provoked, provoked a reaction. That's the second time your expression has changed when I've mentioned the suture. Now I know that the architect of the world wound is capable of feeling remorse if only when she sends her drenched minion on a deadly mission i see i am not the only one making observations and drawing conclusions you are analyzing me that is commendable you are seeking answers trying to understand the crux of the matter that is good all right let's get to the crux of the matter indeed what i want to know is what do you want from me patience before we continue i want you to receive your power okay uh i just literally took down ikpilis or whatever his name was in three hits so i'm sorry but um i'm gonna refuse your offer here You channel all your power into the words, and strangely, you feel a surge of power within you in response. You turn down what a real Vorlish offered you, and your whole being embraces that choice. A wave of cold washes over your chest, and the open wound becomes smaller, as if your decision compelled it to shrink. That effect. How unexpected. It deserves to be studied, but I will see to that later. Well, maybe I'm your creation. But not one you can control, that's for sure. Enough! Enough of this madness! I was blind. Oh, Lady of Heaven, how blind I was. I saw holiness in the Half-Fiend's creation. But is it truly possible? Angelic light in a creature of darkness? Am I tricking myself into thinking that I have been deceived? Forgive me, Champion. I must leave you. I must collect myself. Pray. Reflect. Find me in the Nexus. Okay, well, I don't... It's kind of... You're not a good friend if you're leaving now. I want to help you close the world wound. Okay. Arilu's words are cut off by a quiet laugh. Sitting on the throne that was empty just a moment ago is none other than Nocticula, ruler of Alushinira and the Midnight Isles, a powerful demon lord and the only and the one they call Our Lady in Shadow. Her red lips curl into an ironic smile and her large eyes observe you within keen interest. With keen interest. <laughs> you were about to say, we are going to close the world wound, weren't you, Arilu? 
I see no reason to continue deceiving this mortal. Now I am convinced that he is quite worthy of serving me. I will even reward him with a modicum of knowledge about the events in which he is about to take part. Okay. Um. You've been sitting on your throne and listening to us this whole time? Naturally. I am in the habit of observing my servants and guests while remaining unseen. Their private thoughts fly most eagerly from their lips when they believe themselves to be unwatched. And secrets exchanged in whispers are often invaluable. Cool. Well, a bit off topic here. Sorry, Nocticula, but I am one unlawful one chaotic decision away from losing my lawful alignment so i may just say please allow me to greet you ah uh, do i really want to say that though i'm just gonna say i have too many questions and i demand answers you are a guest here mortal a guest of the lady in shadow the vanquisher of many a demon lord I am the only one here who is entitled to demand answers. You may ask your questions when I allow you to do so. For now, remember your manners and greet me properly. All right, well. I, I would then say, please allow me to greet you, great ruler of Midnight Isles. It's a lawful response. Your manner does not lack courtesy. That is to be commended. I have had my eye on you for a very long time. You see, it was at my behest that Lady Vorlesh imbued you with such incredible powers. But I was curious to see your worth as an individual, not as Lady Vorlesh's creation. Thus, I decided to postpone our meeting and see how you'd fare in Alishanira and whether or not you could win respect and power among those not so easily impressed by outstanding magical abilities. Well, you've passed my test adequately by proving that your character and your will are stronger than the Nehindrian powers Lady Vorlesh has vested in you. You are wise, my lady. However, only those who have never known or forgotten what it is like to be mortal can so easily dismiss the importance of power. To be someone whose life is fragile and can be cut short at any moment like a candle snuffed out by a gust of wind. It is a shame your angel has left you, mortal. I would have liked to talk to him. I don't expect I will get another chance, as that celestial buffoon's days are numbered. Hmm. You were able to see... Well, why Why do you think the Hand of Inheritor is going to die? Because he charged off all alone into the vastness of the Abyss. An old friend awaits him there. The Echo of Discari. And the Echo has been anticipating this meeting for a long time. The Hand of Inheritor told me his magic deceived the eyes of all evil spawn of the Abyss, but not yours? Perhaps you don't know everything about me yet, mortal. Perhaps you made the same mistake as many before you, and many who were more insightful and more powerful than you, by presuming to know what to expect from the Lady in Shadow. Okay, well tell me about the Echo of the Skari. He is a strange creature, a bespoke creation, so to speak. Long before the world wound was opened, Descari, that little cricket, was seeking a way to have some fun on Galarian and assert his influence there. One day, he decided to gather a few strong mortal followers, fuse them together into one being, and pump that being full of his own power, in the belief that something worthwhile would come of it. That is how the Echo came to be. To the great dismay of both the Echo and the Lord of Crickets, the Echo was greeted by Eridan, protector of humankind. Eridan gave the Echo such a thorough thrashing, the whole abyss thought him dead. And yet he was not. 
Cricket the Younger is alive and well, though I cannot say the same for Eridan. But the Echo remembers his humiliation still. He hates anything and everything related to Eridan, especially his inheritor, Ayomede. Her heralds, her priests, her temples. He would hate Ayomede's pet pug if she had one. Okay, that kind of answers my next question. Why does the Echo of the Skyrim prey upon the hand of, of the inheritor? Envy, humiliation, ego. The usual playthings of little boys from all planes and realities. The Echo suffered more than one defeat. First at Eridan's hand, then under the onslaught of the forces of heaven. Those routes taught him to attack his enemies by stealth, boldly and often, killing and crippling anyone close to the light-bringing goddess. Now, it seems, he has decided the time has come. The Herald of Iomede himself is in the Abyss alone, without a retinue of lesser angels. Okay. He's an interesting little bird, that angel. Before he became the Herald of Iomede, he served for Gothiel, the General of Vengeance. I've always found the fate of that Imperial Lord to be quite fascinating. Did you know that the father of the Upper Plains' top military leader was a devil from Hell? Ragathiel had to achieve many feats to redeem his unholy legacy in the eyes of the other Imperial Lords. But he did. A remarkable tale, is it not? Your conversation is interrupted by a concerned looking succubus who silently approaches Nocticula and then begins fervently whispering into her ear. Nocticula's expression turns hard and cold. As Nocticula ponders the new development, the messenger makes eyes at you playfully. You recognize those green eyes, except they were awash with pain when you last saw them, their owner bleeding out in the caverns of the Nexus. The succubus smiles slyly and gives you a wink. Another island, another loss. Enough. I warned them that I would not stand for the desolation of my realm. They have not heeded me, and they will regret it. Go to your sisters and tell them to prepare. Right, that green-eyed succubus, I know her. Yes. You've already met Laulia, my talented assistant. I've heard she was very convincing at acting out her tragic death in the minds of the Nexus. As you can see, I've been watching you since your very first moments in the Abyss. And even a little earlier. I have prepared a beautiful intrigue that will topple many of your enemies and seal the world wound forever, ending the threat to Galarian. And you have the chance to become part of that intrigue. Now, this is where things get interesting. Let's start with, did Ariel really create me? She has certainly had a hand in your present state of existence. Lady Vorlesh designed the word wound, a magical phenomenon of unfathomable, unfathomable power. To seal it, we required a key that was just as strong and unique. Simply put, we required a champion and she chose you. Both of, uh, both your powers and that wound on your chest were the result of her experiments when she infused your soul with the essence of the abyss. Of course, you remember none of that. Everything was, do was done in secret. Even the power granted to you was purified to the extent that it was possible so that you would not guess its source ahead of time. In trial after trial, we watched you will, uh, your will be tempered and when the time came, we started filling you with the energies of Nahindron crystals. These energies are necessary for the task at hand. Everything that's happened to you was part of my intrigue. I was going to summon you and reveal the truth when the time was right. Instead, you have followed your queen's orders and arrived her here early. One can only hope that you are prepared to accept the truth. Everything has its price, says Arilu. Your wound was, in essence, the flip side of all my experiments. There was a reason why we required a true champion, not merely a living tool whom we could fi uh, fling into the flames of the world wound and close it like any lesser rift. I think you should know that. 
Don't be too hasty. We have burned him with enough relevations for now. Give him time to become accustomed to the truth about himself. Then you can share all the details. Okay. What exactly are you offering me? I'm offering you the chance to become my weapon. Your enemies are a, are a thorn in my side as well as yours. What's more, I have never schemed against Golarion, nor have my warriors taken part in the conquest of your plane. At least not on my behest. There is no cause for enmity between us. Why would you want to close the wound? When the world wound opened, I was pleased. My realm was not connected to another plane. I wanted to make it into, the, into a crossroads of words. A place where demons, devils and even angels could meet. The wound was a convenient path along which I could advance my ideas. But the Midnight Isles were not the only realm that had been linked to Golarion through the wound. The Sky and Baphomet now also had a way from their realms into your plane. Their servants flooded my island and spread out across them like plague of locusts, killing guests who were under my protection, questioning my rule. They were driven by their lust to conquer and enslave, whether on Glarion or in another abyssal realm. I was forced to shift my focus and express my discontent. Eventually, atop the bones of our servants, we reached an accord. I would let their armies pass and they would comply with my wishes while on my islands. Of course, the accord is a polite fiction. Both the Discarities and Baphomites the sky ties and baphomites are attempting attempting to amass their power and influence in alushinira to overthrow me when they think i'm not watching they break my taboos and revel, uh, revel in their own impotence and worst of all lady vorlesh told me about the nahindrian crystals they realize what kind of power the crystals hold, and now they are determined to mine every last deposit hidden within my islands. And once an island loses its crystals, it becomes nothing but floatsome, slowly sinking into the dark waters of Ishiar. With every lost island, my power is diminished. I could start a war and kill the plunderers, but a major conflict would hinder some of my, uh, uh, my other plans. So instead, I will teach my neighbors a lesson by orchestrating their ingaminous defeat at the hands of a mortal. What do I gain by serving you? A reasonable question. One must always serve one's own interests. Well, rest assured that you will be adequately, adequately rewarded. I'll give you gifts befitting your ambitions and my patronage which you can certainly con count on. Will prove more valuable than any enchanted trinkets you could dream up. If you're so powerful, why do you need me? If I were to make a move myself, it would start a war. Not that I'm afraid of doing so, but it would hamper my more important plans. Okay, what are the more important plans then? Baphomet and Descari could never, be, uh, uh, could never best me. But they could sow enough chaos and spill enough blood that visitors from other planes would shudder at the mention of Alushinira. No, I will wage war on my own terms in the shadows and I will remain unseen until I drive my blade into my enemy's back. And since Galfrey happened to send you to my realm, you have the honor of becoming my blade, mortal. Be glad you're wielded by skillful hands. We should also reveal how exactly our blade will be employed. We can discuss the details later when the moment is right. Now it's not the time for idle conversation. How exactly do you plan to close the world wound? It's a complicated magical process. You will receive precise instructions once you've captured the threshold fortress on Golarion. There, at the exact spot where Lady Vorlish opened the world wound, you will be able to close it. But first you will have to crush the guardians of the threshold, and their forces are growing by the day. Hepsamira, Baphomet's daughter, is mining a large number of Nahindran crystals in my realm. These crystals are her secret weapon. No army of Golarion can stand against them. You must stop Hepsamira. If you do not, your world will fail and my plans will suffer significant harm. 
At one time, I disclosed the, disclosed the secret of transformation to two servants of Baphomet and Iskari, Zantir Bank and Muta Safen. It was all well it was a well cal calculated gambit, which bought us time and assured both the Scary and Baphomet of my loyalty. Muta Safan is Hepsamira's favorite. He oversees the transformation of her army. Hepsamira is currently on another island far from here. The route to that place is plagued by pirates, monsters, tempests, and other more terrifying dangers. Have you heard of the living bubbles of frozen time that swallow airships? And when the ships reach port, their crews discover they've been gone for a hundred years. That is not the strangest occurrence you could encounter on your journey. I'm willing to provide you with a decent ship and an experienced crew. If you kill Hepsamira, it will stop her sinking any uh, more of my islands, but without giving Baphomet cause to declare war on me. Right, I may know the, I may know the best person to be a captain on that ship. So what do you think, Commander? Personally, I'd rather take my chances rowing to this another island far from here in a rusty bucket that make any deals with the lady in shadow. I'll steer. Why is so important to kill Hepsamira? The Scarian Baphomet won't just stand there and watch you close the world wound. They'll send their armies after you, so you will need an army of your own. And that is something the Crusaders won't have for long. Hepsamira is mining more and more Nahindron crystals to empower her forces when she attacks Golarion. If you don't stop, the Crusaders' resistance will be crushed, and the ranks of demons pour, 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 uh, pouring through the world wound into your world will mul multiply a hundredfold. You were sent here to cut off the demon army's supply of Nahindran crystals, weren't you? Well, that's exactly what you're going to accomplish. I will consider your offer, and I accept it, I'm sure. I respect your caution and won't force you into submission. We all stand to gain if you do not if you do my bidding of your own volition. An interesting destiny lies before you, mortal. You will rise to great heights and play a part in events of titanic pr pr proportions. Many would give their life for a chance to treat such a path. Hepsamira visits Alushinira every now and again, but her true lair is far from here. She hides on the island of Colifir, to the northwest of the archipelago. There lies her secret fortress. In the deep mines, her slaves dig Nahindran crystals for the invading army she plans to bring to Golarion. I will give you a magnificent airship and an experienced crew to take you there. It will be a long and perilous journey. Take some time to prepare. Right, I killed Willidus, your court mage. I am aware of this, of course. It is lamentable. In a way, since his fear of me was strong enough to make him impeccably loyal. However, his death is but a single move in a much larger game. In games like this, losing a few pawns is unavoidable. Um, my companion Ember would like to speak to, with you. Ember, Ember, so that's her then. Oh. So that's her then? Well, approach. I have heard you bleeding your pathetic prayers at me. You have some nerve addressing me with such nonsense. Did you think I would simply repent? Renounce my status as a demon lord? Do you have any idea what I had to do to acquire it? Wait, what is this? Tears start rolling down Ember's cheeks as she sniffles noisily. She presses her maimed hands against her heart as she stares up at Nocticula. Her fragile form shudders from weeping. Why have you brought this simpleton here? This is Alushinira, not Nerosia. We don't give alms here. <laughs> I can't stand these noises. Do you think you're the first to try to move me with a display of tears? It only makes me angry. If you wish to speak, then Wipe your nose and speak clearly! I... 
I know what you had to do to others and and to yourself. I'm so sorry. So sorry. If only I could ease your pain somehow. Calm your sorrows. I'm just gonna say nothing. So, where were we? My pain? My sorrows? What nonsense are you talking? Don't tell me you pity me. I'm so sorry. You're the most miserable soul I've ever seen. I've seen people burned alive. People being devoured by monsters. People burying their children. They were in pain. So much pain. But I've never seen anyone in as much pain as you. What is this saccharine drivel? What do you even know of me, Nat? I've seen your city. You were the one who built it. It is the way you wanted it to be. It holds all of your dreams, all of your heart, and everyone in this city is suffering. Everywhere, all the time, every minute. All who live here are hurting and scared. If these are its citizens, how miserable must its ruler feel? And this is what you brought her to me for. You think this infantile sniveling is worthy of my attention? I've seen the truth of her wisdom more than once. Perhaps it would uh, benefit you to listen to her as well. As if I hadn't seen enough sanctimonious bores in my life. So, what do you suggest I do, preacher? Beg the good gods' forgiveness? Devote myself to serving a sword-swinging upstart, perchance? Oh, oh, or that old crone, the moon? No, no. Gods can't help anyone. They're just like us mortals. Silly, frightened, clueless. You're almost a goddess yourself. You know better than anyone that no one can save you. No one except you. Save me? From what exactly? From yourself. From what you've done to yourself. From the city you've imprisoned yourself in. Listen! You are a queen, but you're the queen of pain and filth. Your realm is a realm of your own suffering. You're almost a goddess. You can do anything you want. So why won't you make yourself happy? You could become the Redeemer Queen. <laughs> oh, the Redeemer Queen. <laughs> That's new. Never in all my years have I heard anything like that. Enough joking. Get out of my sight. Or I'm afraid I might decide to keep you here forever. As my fool. Do you think she took my words to heart? Who knows? I think she probably did, to be fair. I think she's just pretending, but... In reality, I think Ember... She, she twisted the knife there, definitely. That would be great. I told you to get out! I don't want to hear your squeaky voice again! Right, okay. Calm down. I want to ask you about other powerful denizens of the Abyss. Are you interested in one of my servants, or do you wish for me to tell you something about your enemies? What is your relationship with Arilu? She works for me, isn't it obvious? Lady Voler is very talented. She may be the most brilliant and capable mind ever to come from your plane. Uh, and the guile she used to betray one demon lord master after another impressed me so much that I offered her the position of my advisor on matters of magic. Naturally, the esteemed Lord Goat and Lord Locusts don't know a thing about the betrayal of their faithful lucky lady Vorlesh. I plan, I plan to keep it a secret for a while longer. 
Betrayal is too strong a, a, a word. I opened the path to Gularion for those two and I told them how to extract power from Nahindran crystals. That will suffice. Or su suffice. Oh, I don't even know. Anyway, uh, doesn't it bother you that Aurelius serves another master? I'm not prone to jealousy. Let the scarreting Lady Vora serves still sells him still. His back brain seems incapable of sensing betrayal. As for Baphomet, he, like any talented liar, is most vulnerable when he's trying to deceive someone else. He was so pleased to have fooled the scary that he became blind to the treachery that was happening right under his snout. In truth, Lady Vorlish loyal loyalty is mine alone. Loyalty is for fools. Shared interest, that is what rational minds rely upon. That and fear. No one in the right mind would oppose the lady in shadow. How did Arido become your servant? When the world wound was first opened, it only led to the Scarry's realm. But then there was another more powerful breach. The wound expanded and its paths now passed through my realm and Baphomets as well. Before long, all, sor all sorts of interlopers had heard about the power contained within the crystal here. And the Midnight Isles were, Isle, were, Isles were soon overrun with agents from my new neighbors. They flouted my embargo, burrowing greedily into my rocks, stealing my crystals. The main culp culprit was one Arilu Vorlesh. She was the one who discovered the energies of Nahindra crystals. I had captured her and was about to carry out her agonizing execution. When Lady Vorlesh offered me something I desired even more than her death, she entered my service and her main task, main task since then has been to close the world wound. Once it's sealed, my realm will once again be cut off from those of Baphomet and Descari, and their slaves will no longer be able to infiltrate, infiltrate my islands with such ease. Do you remember the elven archmage who used to serve you thousand years ago? He's still alive, we know each other. Really? He was well past his youth even back then, and now... Just how old is he? Can mortals even live that long? Well, apart from your immortal Aslanti... Say hello to him on behalf of the Lady in Shadow, and tell him that the one who replaced him has disappointed me immensely with his incompetence. No matter how hard he tried, he could never live up to my magnificent elf. You know, you've managed to surprise me, a rare occurrence for someone who knows just about everything. Are Baphomet and Discovery your allies? Uh, what a stupid question, she just told us. They are pretty much enemies, but allies is too strong of a word for our relationship. Our connection was forged by circumstances, not out of a desire to deal with each other. When the world wound opened, it tied your word to our realms. I did not join my armies with theirs, but I was forced into making peace with them so as not to get bogged down in a tiring and distracting war. If I had the opportunity, I would have met them on my terms and expanded my territories at their expense. Uh, unfortunately, this is not my care. This is not currently possible. By the way, one of them came to me with the offer of an atrocious, atrocious alliance that involved conceiving little ones together. I'm still contemplating the specifics of my refusal. It needs to be clear and un unambig unambiguous. Everything is clear to me now. I want to know more about you. Recounting my whole story would take longer than your believe brief mortal life allows. The list of demon lords of slain is, is endless on its own, as is the number of islands under my rule. And that just the past, there is also my future. How did you become a demon lord? Bear in mind that, was, that I've always been unique. Ever since I was born, I was the first succubus of the abyss, the perfect specimen of my race. I had been enjoying my youth, sharing it with my brother and lover, until the hungry gaze of demon lord Nahindri fell upon me. That greedy tyrant saw me as a jewel to be added to his treasure hoard. 
he tried to abduct me. I knew I had no chance of defeating a demon lord, but in that moment I was not thinking at all. I was fighting for my freedom. When, I when it was all over, Nahindri was dead. I eviscerated him and for many days afterward, blood spout from his open carcass. First his body turned to stone and then his blood, which had been flowing like a stream, began to crystallize into massive purple glaciers. Now do you see why they are called Nahindrian crystals? Perhaps they should be called Nocticulan crystals because of because as Nahindri's blood crystallized, so did my understanding of my power. Soon after I began my campaign of conquest, I was cunning and swift and the demon lords themselves trembled before me knowing I could take their very lives. Only when all of the abyss spoke my name with terror of reverence did I decide that I had killed enough, I had a realm, I had power, I no longer shared with my brother, I had servants and most importantly <coughs> I had safety. No one has ever repeated old Nahindri's mistakes. No one has tried to make me their slave. Are the Midnight Isles really the corpses of slain demon lords? Yes, my realm is quite literally built on the bones of my slain enemies. Ironic, isn't it? How did you turn the demon lords into islands? Surely you don't expect me to reveal the secret to you? There is no need for mortals to learn the weakness of demon lords. All I can say is that everything started with my desire for revenge. After I had dealt with Nahindri, I was furious at the thought of that vile a uh, literous wretch just teleporting over to the rift of repose where he could turn to stone and stay there to rot for the reminder of eternity i wanted to trample his foul corpse to keep his bloodied body within my sight forever i yearned to display my glorious trophy to all of the abyss and that's when my power first manifested. I studied my newfound abilities and learned how to use them. Before long, I possessed not just one island, but an entire archipelago. What do you plan to do next? Subdue all of the abyss? Possibly, or perhaps I have something grander in mind. The abyss? Who cares about the abyss? Uh, I have no more questions for now. I have a question, Lady Nocticula. How many copulation partners have you had? I'm making a list of the for the encyclopedia, and I believe you may take one of the top spots. <laughs> Shut up, idiot. What matters to me is not quantity but quality, and I am well ahead of any other denizen of the abyss in that regard. That is where we will end this discussion. Right, I'm not ready yet to leave. What? I'm not ready. Um, what if I tell her about treason? Is it gonna be Valexia or Shamira? Well, let's just say I still have some business to take care of in Alushinira. Arilu, you are no longer needed here. As you wish, my lady. There is one more thing we must discuss, the lexicon of paradox, Lady Vorlesh magical uh, treat that contains many secrets of the word wound. You and my servant Lady Vorlesh were just ta talking about the lexicon of paradox. For many years it has remained split in half, harmless, but what once was, but what was once divided can be made whole again. Who knows what power the book could in part to its owner. What if they expand the world wound even further? Or connect it to other planes? Not a chance. The lexicon of paradox has caused more enough trouble already. You already possess the first half of the book. Find the other one and bring them both to me. I will reward you hands handsomely. Given the book into my, uh, my keeping will also protect Golarion from suffering a second world wound disaster. The lexicon of paradox will be much safer under my watchful eye than in your travel bags. Wouldn't you agree? Why do you need this book? One world wound alone has been enough of a nuisance for me. I want to ensure that some future mage 
leafing through this book doesn't link any realm to another plane. I'll consider your offer. The reward will not disappoint you. I promise. This dangerous knowledge ought to be lock locked up securely. I won't keep you any longer. Uh, I still have some business. How can I... So, alright, you're just gonna be here. Well, I did not give the first... Oh, I need to speak to the Hand of Inheritor, but... What about... Dangerous Knowledge? The side the Lexicon of Paradox fate. Wait, did I give the first part to the Queen? This is part two. Yeah, I think I gave the first part to Golfrey. Okay. This is the last chapter to complete this this quest. Okay. Well, where do I get it from now? Maybe she's still in the Midnight Fair in the Queen. We'll figure it out. Also, Mythic level up. Pretty cool. Okay, well, that was Nocticula, Arilu, and this crazy revelation. So, we now have to decide what we're gonna do with this knowledge. And I also need to think about what everything that we just heard. So, when we're back, we're gonna make some very important decisions. Which will probably greatly influence how the game will end for me. So it's gonna be very, very interesting. <laughs>